Hello Orange League fans, I am S. Blanzer, coach of the Dallas Star U, and this is our Week 2 Team Builder video for our match against the Toronto Star Raptor, coached by the Inferno Otaku. He also records his matches and uploads them on YouTube. His channel is down below, be sure to go check him out. So, Toronto's roster is Mega Altaria, Scissor, Thunderous Incarnate, Hansi, Rotom Heat, Vaporeon, Blaze Blaziken, Alphagrigus, Ifri, and Torkoal. Now before I go in this, I will have to say that this is actually my second uh, team that I built against uh, Toronto. I had a team and I even had a video all prepared, but I saw some glaring holes in my team. Uh, for example, I was going to run Choice Vex Hydreigon uh, to be able to hit anything hard until I realized that's just a free switch in for Mega Altaria to set up a Dragon Dance and sweep my team. So, I developed some team concepts when it came to building this team. One, I must not let Mega Altaria set up a Dragon Dance for free, even if it means losing one of my Pokemon, the Mega Altaria. If I can get damaged where I can kill it, with a Choice Scarf Miss Magus or a Quick Attack from Mega Pinsir, then I will have effectively neutralized the threat that is Mega Altaria. It won't be able to sweep my team. Two, I must neutralize Thunder, Thunderous Incarnate uh, as well as the expected Choice Scarf Rotom Heat um, because these get in the way of Mega Pinsir setting up a Swords Dance and sweeping the team. They're also a huge threat against anything else. Those are the two that I am most worried about after Mega Altaria. If I can neutralize the Thunderous, and if that Rotom Heat is indeed Scarfed like I expect it to be, and I can get rid of it, then I will be in a solid position to take victory this week. M3, as we saw in our last week's match against the UCLA Ursa Rings, Rick Room did quite a number on my team. So I must minimize the opportunities that Cofagrius is going to have to be able to set up the Trick Room because this team that I'm facing is a very slow team. Rick Room arguably helps my opponent even better than my opponent from last week. So I must not allow that trick room to get set up if I can help it. So, let's go into my team and I will discuss my team concepts. So let's go into my team. First of all, common weaknesses uh, that Toronto Star Raptors has. Toronto is extremely weak to rock type attacks. In fact, he has absolutely zero resistances to Rock-type attacks and three weaknesses. And the biggest weaknesses are actually two of the mods that I am scared of this week. Uh, one being Thunderous and the other being Road of Heat. With Rock-type attacks on as many of my mods as possible, I am able to hit these mods super effectively and do a significant amount of damage, which I think is going to be key to victory this week. I am packing a rock type of attack on anything that I can. Uh, that is the idea. It is going to be my safest middle ground play most of the time to go for the rock type attack. Now the unfortunate thing is, uh, a lot of rock type attacks are not 100% accurate. So there is a certain level of risk there. However, I have mitigated that by running the maximum accuracy attack possible in uh, whatever cases I could. I was highly tempted to put Head Smash on something like Embor and go to town, but then I realized that it's not going to match up very well. Okay, here's what I'm not expecting my opponent to bring with me. I'm not expecting him to bring Shiftry because everything on my team absolutely destroys Shiftry. Simply not a good matchup for him. I also do not expect to see Torkoal because I have a lot of 
a uh, high powered specially offensive Pokemon. And uh, I don't think Torkoal is going to like that very well. Even Mega Pinsir, if I set up a Sword Stance, I 100, I, I Oko that Torkoal uh, about 30% of the time. It, it does more damage and I'm sure he would like to take. And if Stealth Rocks are set up, then that's a straight up Oko. So I don't expect to see that. I don't expect to see Blaze Blaziken, although he could bring it in lieu of the Rotom Key. I do believe that Choice Scarf Rotom Key is his best uh, alternative though. However, he could bring it and I think I can deal with it if he does bring the Blaziken. It doesn't have the greatest uh, stats in the world uh, defensively and I, I think I can work with it. And I don't expect him to bring Chansey. Uh, I think Vaporeon is actually a better choice for him this week. Vaporeon and Calfagrius as his wall form. However, Chansey could very well come and be effective. So I need to make sure that I have plenty of mods that are able to neutralize that Chansey to prevent it from doing things that Chansey likes to do. So what I am expecting, I'm expecting Mega Altaria to come. I'm expecting this Mega Altaria to be a physically offensive, adamant, dragon dancing set with Return, Earthquake, Dragon Dance, and Roost. Now Roost could potentially be switched out for something else, but I do expect them to bring Roost because if I were to bring Cresselia, Cresselia would only do about 40% uh, with Ice Beam maximum uh, on a defensive spread and he would be able to wall that pretty well and uh, recover the damage while uh, setting up Dragon Nest when he's full. Now he does risk the 10% freeze, you know, if that goes for a long period of time and also a crit, which is a 116 chance. However, uh, I do expect uh, to see the recovery on the Mega Altaria instead of a third move because Return and Earthquake does give him the coverage that he needs. I'm expecting Thunderous to come, and I expect this to have Psychic. Uh, Psychic for the Nido King and the Tentacruel if I wanted to bring it. I'm expecting it to have Volt Switch and or Thunderbolt. Um, possibly just one or the other, maybe even both. I am expecting him to have Thunder Wave so that he can priority paralyze something that he thinks is Scarfed, uh, or even my Mega Pinsir if he's within uh, Quick Attack Death range, uh, because that would uh, render a lot of my faster offensive threats uh, pretty much useless. And for the fourth move, if it's not uh, a second electric type, possibly, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure, uh, maybe, maybe Knock Off. Uh, would be a good idea, or even Focus Blast. Either Knock Off or Focus Blast, I think, is what he would bring. Knock Off with Cresselia, Focus Blast, or the Hydreigon. That is what I'm expecting to see from Thunderous this week. Uh, I could be wrong. He could uh, do well with a Choice Spec set, for example. He could even do uh, pretty well uh, with a Nasty Plot set. Those are all things that could happen, but that's what I'm expecting to see this week, is uh, a Psychic Thunder Wave. Thunderbolts and knock off or focus black. I do expect to see Scissor this week, and I think it's going to be his defogger because, as I said before, Shitri and Torkoal are not uh, really uh, great uh, against my team. So I do expect to see defog, uh, bullet punch obviously for pri a priority, and for the last two moves, uh, I'm not sure. It could be Roost. And bug bite, it could be uh, superpower and knockoff. You know, it could be any number of things. Uh, however, I do have ways of taking care of the scissor. Uh, I do expect it to be a defog, uh, possibly choice, uh, because you know sometimes people like to choice a uh, choice band with defog. Uh, but I don't think that's going to be the case this week. I think it's probably going to be uh, some kind of life orb attack or even a full piece set. So I am expecting to see Cofagrius 100% of the time. I do think it's going to carry the Trick Room. I'm also thinking it's going to carry Will-O-Wisp and the Pain Split. And for the last move, uh, could be Knock Off, uh, it, could be any, it could be the Shadow Ball. 
Um, it could be any number of things, but I think that Will-O-Wisp, Pain Splits, and Trick Room are definitely going to come. He could even run Toxic Spikes. So I need to make sure that I don't allow that Trick Room to get set up. For his especially defensive wall, I am expecting to see Vaporeon. However, he could bring Chansey. He could even bring both Chansey and Vaporeon, although I don't think it would be in his best interest this week. However, Vaporeon, uh, I, I do think that he walls most of my team very well, except for the Zapdos. But even the Zapdos, uh, the specially defensive spread, uh, or the defensive spread that I am running, my Thunderbolt's only doing about 50%, uh, and not even 100% of the time. So it could actually wall it pretty well if it's significantly invested in special defense. So I am expecting it to be a Wish, possibly Protect, maybe Heal Bell, Scald, and Ice Beam. The so Wish, Protect, Scald, and Ice Beam is what I expect to see out of Vaporeon. It could be tweaked up, he might run Heal Bell, but that's, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking Wish, Protect, Scald, Ice Beam. If he does bring Chansey, I'm expecting to see it run counter to try to catch my Mega Pinsir off guard. Uh, because that is the thing that Chansey's like to do. I would also expect if he brings Chansey for it to be a Stealth Rock setter. Uh, in fact, come to think of it, it would be uh, in his best interest to bring it to set Stealth Rocks for just that reason. The so Stealth Rocks counter Thunder Wave and Soft Boil is what I'm expecting to see out of Chansey. Uh, he could bring the Seismic, do uh, seismic Toss. Um, he would have to give up something else in a return for that, but uh, that's what I'm thinking out of Chansey. I do expect the Rotom Heat, and like I said, I do expect this to be a Choice Scarf Rotom Heat. And I think his best spread this week is going to be the Volt Switch, the Overheat, the Trick, because it could be beneficial for him to trick a Choice Scarf on Cresselia or Zapdos. And for the third move, uh, maybe Will-O-Wisp, maybe, maybe Pain Split, if he can get that Scarf tricked off him, something like that. Uh, but I am expecting to see the Scarf Rotom Heat because it will be able to take out my Mega Pinsir. I do expect that to be his second answer to my Mega Pinsir after Thunderous. So yeah, Mega Altaria, Scissor, Thunderous, Pansy, or Vaporeon. Scarf, Rotom Heat, and Cofagoras. That's the team I expect to see. So we'll see if I'm right. Alright, so first of all we have uh, Sir Dick Pinch, the Mega Pinsir. If you remember from our Week 1 match against UCLA, Sir Dick Pinch was able to allow us to come back in a pinch, taking 5 kills for the match. This week I am running Return, Quick Attack, Substitute, and Swords Dance. The idea here is that if I can get rid of Thunderous, and I can at least neutralize the uh, Scarf Rotom Heat, get it to the point where either one will die to a Quick Attack, then I can set up a Substitute on something like Anti or possibly Cofagrius, and get a Swords Dance and Sweep. Now another thing that could stop me in my tracks is in fact Cofagrius. Cofagrius gets the ability Mummy, which when uh, I attack with a contact move, with which both return and quick attack are, I will lose my air late ability, which will put a damper on my offensive power. Now even at a Swords Dance, a normal type return still does quite a number. But if I can't kill that Calfagrigus, then I'd have to switch out anyways because I won't be able to touch it anymore. So, luckily, Calfagrigus at plus 2 dies 92% of the time. I just have to make sure that if Calfagrigus is still alive when I set up the Swords Dance for the sweep, I am actually able to sweep with a non-stab normal type return. However, you know, I, I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, if I can get that Swords Dance up, if Thunder is out of the way, then I'm golden. Even if we still have the Scarf Rotom Heat out there, uh, if I had the Substitute, you know, I would expect it to uh, Volt Switch so it doesn't take any damage. I can Quick Attack for about 50% at plus 2 uh, to that Scarf Rotom Heat. 
actually a little bit less if it's uh, got max bulk, which I'm sure it will. I'm certain that my opponent will speed creep uh, to uh, my highest uh, speed creep to Mega Pincer uh, with the Choice Scarf. Next, we have the captain of our team, Hydraco the Hydragon. Now, I would like to get Hydragon some kills this week, and that's why originally I had this thing as a choice spec setup with Dark Pulse, uh, Draco Meteor, Flash Cannon, and U Turn. However, when I thought about that, you know, it's, let's say I take out Compagrius with a Dark Pulse, it is enough to one shot. Then Mega Altaria comes in. Dark Pulse only does about 30%. Mega Altaria sets up a Dragon Dance and is pretty much able to beat my team in most cases. So I could not allow myself to be put into that position. At the same time, I wanted to be able to uh, neutralize the Chansey, for example. Chansey would be an excellent switch in for any of uh, Hydreigon's attacks. So. I tweaked the spread a little bit. I'm running Dark Pulse. Dark Pulse with an Expert Belt, unless a Calfagagus is running a significant amount of special defense, it will one-hit KO 100% of the time. With max special defense, it does between 92% and 105% and will OKO about 30% of the time. However, I do expect that Calfagrius, if he comes, which I'm expecting him to, to be maximum defense because he's going to want to sponge a hit from Mega Pincer uh, to remove my ability and then force me to switch out. And running maximum defense is the best way for him to do that. I am running Flamethrower for Scissor. Another problem with my last set is Scissor could also switch in and I wouldn't be able to two-hit KO Scissor even with uh, the choice specs if that Scissor is bulky with max HP and max special defense. With this spread, I'm able to uh, one-shot Scissor with the Flamethrower, and the beauty of running the Expert Belt is I will not reveal an item after I make an attack, so it makes it look as if I am choice locked into something, and I can surprise my opponent with a super effective move, which is all I expect to be using with this, hence the expert build. For example, if I kill Calfagrius with Dark Pulse and Mega Altaria comes in, I can flash cannon Mega Altaria, which I'm expecting Mega Altaria to be significantly bulky, at least maximum HP, and flash cannon will do between 60 and 70% which while it's not in range to die to quick attack unless stealth rocks are up, it is in range for Miss Mages to come in and kill it with an, a Dazzling Gleam or I think an Ancient Power actually does enough at that point. And I'm running Taunts to stop the Chansey. If Chansey switches in, I can Taunt it to prevent it from paralyzing something on my team uh, or setting up stealth rocks or soft boiling, or any number of things that Chansey likes to do. I was considering running Superpower. Uh, he might be afraid to switch in Chansey because I did have Superpower on this thing last week, but we'll see. I do believe that this uh, provides the best coverage for my Hydreigon this week. So now on my team we have Zeppelin the Zapdos, and I am running a a bulky uh, defensive spread this week uh, with 252 HP, 128 defense, a positive special defense nature, and 128 special attack. I wanted this thing to be able to not only take hits from Thunderous and Scarf Rotom Heat, but also be able to take hits from Mega Altaria and not get two shotted. That is the reason behind my EV spread. I am running Thunderbolt. I was considering running Volt Switch for Pivot, but I wanted Thunderbolt to be able to do over 50% to a specially defensive Vaporeon. So I got the more powerful attack, and I'm running 128 special attack to allow myself to two hit KO that Vaporeon when it comes in. I'm running Ancient Power because, as I said, everything on my opponent's team is weak to rock. 
uh, or at least neutral to rock. And uh, two of the mods that I'm afraid of that I think he's going to bring are super effective. Uh, it will be super effective against them. Not only that, but Ancient Power does have a chance of raising my stats by one That chance, but it does have a chance anyway. Ancient Power will do 50% to a max HP uh, Rotom uh, with no other defensive investment. And it will also do about 60 to 70% on, uh, on a Thunderous Incarnate that has a HP investment left over from Speed Creeping Mega Pencil. I have Roost so that I can recover, and I have Tailwind. And the reason why I'm running Tailwind against you know, a, a team that's relatively slow is so that my next Pokemon can come in and take, take care of business, uh, is what I'm hoping. And that is Elvis. The King is coming this week. He did not come last week, this is his first week. And I am running the Expert Belt Cheer Force with the Poison Jab, Rock Slide, Fire Punch, and Toxic Spikes. With maximum attack and 216 speed, enough to outspeed a base 80, even if I'm not in the Tailwind. So what the Tailwind does allow me to do is it allows me to outspeed Thunderous, and it also allows me to outspeed a Choice Scarf Rotom. A Choice Scarf Rotom Heat. Uh, because my speed will be doubled. Rock Slide does 90% to Thunderous and has a chance of one hit KOing Scarf Road of Heat. That's why I'm running Rock Slide instead of Ice Punch. Ice Punch, I can uh, just about knock out the Thunderous every time, but then Road of Heat just switches in. I wanted the Rock Slide to be able to hit as many monsters as possible. I have Poison Jab, which 100% Okos, Mega Altaria, if it's an offensive spread. If it's fully defensive, and this has to be fully max HP, max defense, it can live Poison Jab, but then on the flip side, it's first quick is going to kill me if he's running such a defensive spread. I'm running Fire Punch for the Scissor, and I am running Toxic Spikes. My hope is to get at least one layer of Toxic Spikes up so that whenever Chansey, if, it, if my opponent brings it, or Calfagragus, or even Vaporeon comes in, they will automatically be poisoned. As you know, Chansey does get the natural cure, so normally when Chansey switches out, if it's Toxic, it gets cured when it switches back in. The Toxic Spikes makes that permanent. The Fire Punch makes it so Scissor can't come in and defog without taking a Fire Punch to the face. Now you'll notice with this spread that I have, I do not take on Vaporeon very well, and I do not take on Cofagrigus very well, which one of my team concepts, as you know, is to make sure that Cofagrigus cannot come in instead of Trick Room. So ideally, I bring this in when Cofagrigus is already neutralized, or at least within range to die to Poison Jab or Rock... Probably Poison Jab, actually. Poison Jab does do 30% uh, against a maximum defensive Cofagrigus. So that will be the metric there. Next we have Blue Musketeer. Uh, Blue Musketeer is coming again. Uh, this time I am running a very defensive spread with 252 HP, 120 defense, and 136 speed. That's enough speed to outspeed base 80s. I am not going to uh, stay in against Rotom, so I'm not even going to try to outspeed it. I am running an Impish Nature for the uh, maximum defense. I have Close Combat. Close Combat is mostly for Chansey. Uh, I have Toxic. Toxic for Calfagrigus or if I, anything I can scare out, I can try to uh, lay off a Toxic. Thought to stop Cofagrigus and Chansey from doing nasty things against me, and Stealth Rocks, which is something that's going to be nice to get up to do 25% damage to Thunderous and Rotom Heat whenever they want to come in. Uh, that will go a long way to reducing their longevity and allowing me to uh, one-shot some of the bigger threats on my opponent's team with my other Pokemon. 
Finally, we are bringing in Minerva the Miss Mages again. This time we're running a Choice Scarf set. This is kind of an ace in the hole for me. I am running maximum special attack and 212 speed, which is enough to outspeed a Scarfed Rotom Heat. And I actually need to uh, put more, put the rest of my spread on here. I forgot to do that. And I am going to put that actually in special defense because I'm not going to be able to take physical hits anyways. So I'm running the Shadow Ball for a very powerful stab that does do about 80% to Pythagoras. I'm running Power Gem, which is a 100% accurate rock type move that kind of flies under the radar. I'm hoping that he does not expect to see that. Uh, it will do a, quite a number to Sundarus and also the Road of Heat. I'm running Dazzling Gleam for the Mega Altaria if it comes down to having to outspeed a Dragon Dance Mega Altaria. I will be able to do that with a Spark. And I'm running Destiny Bomb for when all else fails I can switch in on this uh, switch in my Miss Mages, hit Destiny Bond, and bring my opponent down with me. So that's my team. I am having this match tomorrow, uh, tomorrow night actually. If you're watching this video, it means the match has already happened. So I'm not giving any insights uh, uh, for my opponent to know what I'm going to bring against them. It will already have happened and taken place. I am looking forward to hopefully being the only 2-0 team in our division after this week. Uh, but we'll see. Ladies and gentlemen, a new star you is rising. I am Esplancer. Leave your comments down below. Tell me what you think. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. And it would be amazing if you subscribed. Be sure to check out my opponent's channel, also in the link below. And I am hyped. Let's, let's look forward to this for Sunday Night Pokemon.